the good thing, you see, the best thing about graffiti, the best thing about graffiti is you travel everywhere. I never thought that painting graffiti would get you. I thought it was like a, a city type of thing. Like, you know, okay, I bombed New York City. I bombed Queens. I bombed Brooklyn. I bombed Manhattan, the Bronx, Staten Island. But now I'm getting, you know, calls from people from to come to travel to Germany, go to Spain, travel to London, travel to Ireland, you know, places like that. And this place here is like a, like a tourist attraction. Like when a lot of people come from Europe, they come here to the Tasku office. You know, I gotta go to the Tasku. You know, they, they know that well, all the stuff that we've done throughout the years, you know, we've been still doing it. You know, they, they come here to give us props and at the same time they come here to let us know the type of work they do. Because every graffiti art, they want to say, look, this is what I do. This is me. And then they, they got props already. Perfect. You know, oh, you know, give them mad pro. I've seen your work before. Yo, you, 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 you good. Let's do a war here in New York City. So we take them and they do wars with us in New York City. For the I grew up in, in the Bronx here. You know, I did the 60s, I did the 70s, and it was a rough time during that time because a lot of these um, landlords was, was not taking care of the apartment building, they was letting it go. You had drugs that was in effect, so a lot of these landlords just gave up on these buildings because a lot of these people would put pressure on the landlords. The landlord forgot about everything, didn't put no, no more heat during the winter time, no oil. And then sometimes there was no water, you know, so you had to survive during that time. So it was really a place that you had to struggle. And people had no money, people had no work, you know, a lot of people didn't have enough education. You know, rest in peace for a big pun, we always paint his face on the wall. So it's everything got to do with hip hop, you know, it's, it's all part of the same culture. You live in the Bronx, when you step outside, you know, back then you step outside your, your apartment, you saw graffiti, you know, in the hallway. So it's always was there, you know, it's always was part of you. From Chats Crew, I've um, been writing since the early 80s. I started here in the South Bronx, you know, I lived all my life in the South Bronx. And the way I started is, you know, I started looking at other people's tags, you know, like it was already in my neighborhood. When I started, you could see it like when you walk outside, when you walk, like go walk into the grocery store, you walk to the supermarket, there's always somebody or some place on the wall on the gate, you see it attack. So you know, I kept looking at that and then when I was going to, going to high school, I started taking more of the train to get to school. And I started noticing like color pieces on the outside and I kept saying, wow, this is incredible. You know, how these guys get up there? How did these guys, bomb graffiti and the more I kept looking at these trains I wanted to know because throughout the years you know I was an artist you know I used to draw black and white and you know color pencils whatever art was related in school and whatever art was taught in school I learned but the only thing that was they was not teaching was graffiti so when I saw there was art in graffiti I jumped on it like wow I gotta get involved this is good so I got myself a name I started writing actually bring, B-R-N-G. What I did, I took the first letter and the last letter, and I just put it together, and then came up with a number. I said, oh, the number sounds good, because a lot of people wrote graffiti and used a number for a street. I just used the number because people used to say it had like 183 styles of pieces, so I, I started putting 183. And then from there on, you know, I just kept writing that. And then, you know, to this day, I still write BG183. How did I get interested in writing graffiti? Well, basically, <clears throat> I sort of grew up around graffiti. It was all around me, you know, when I was growing up. In my neighborhood, in the streets, and it was all over the subways. But I never really paid it much mind. You know, I always just sort of something that was in the background always. And I, but I was always also into drawing and sketching. And I remember one day coming from downtown on the train, I don't know, from somewhere with my mother or with my grandmother. And when I got off the subway, when the doors closed, there was like this huge top to bottom uh, character on the train. 
And I was like, oh shit, I was like amazed. I was like, damn. I said, I, I wanna do that. I, I saw this cartoon and all these colors on the train and I was like, and it just stuck with me. I was like, I wanna do that, I wanna learn about this. So I went home. Next day I was asking people in the neighborhood, like kids that I knew that tagged up or whatever. I was asking them, yo, you know, how do you do that? What do you think? They're like, oh, you gotta get a name. You know, first thing you gotta do is get a name. Once you get the name, you gotta get go out there and tag. So I, you know, went through the first stages of, you know, the process of getting the name. You know, tried different names out, trying to see something that I like. You know, I went through different variations. And finally, um, a friend of mine who used to paint in the projects, he was like, why don't you try BIO? And he took like a BIO tag, and I was like, I like the way tag look I said let me try it so I practice it and I sort of did like a silver and green piece like really early on and I was like all right I'm gonna stick with his name and I just started using letters BIO and that became my name I guess the internet has a lot to do with that I mean early on what brought graffiti, I guess, to the rest of the world with movies like Style Wars, you know, Wild Style. And then early on, the graffiti magazine, when people first started publishing graffiti artists, you were now able to see what, first of all, the movies like that, Style Wars and stuff, introduced graffiti to the rest of the world. But then the magazines were able to show you what was happening in different cities or whatever at a time. I mean, it was a longer process than today. You know, now with the internet, within the hour, within the minute, actually, you can see stuff happening live as, as it's going on now. You know, the way things are with um, technology. So I guess the internet played a big part in making the world a smaller place, you know, where everyone can communicate just at the touch of a keyboard or whatever. So it just spread and spread. And it was spreading way before the internet, but I think the internet helped to speed it up and to just expose everyone to it. You know, you don't even have to leave your house now to see graffiti. So it depends on what in what sense you mean, because I think you're seeing it in the magazine, seeing it on the internet, I guess you're documenting it. So that's important to document, you know, what goes on. A lot of years have gone and a lot of things have gone undocumented. So I think it's important to be seen, but I think it's always going to be in its truest form, purest form, it's outdoors, whether it be on trains or on walls. To me, that's what it's always gonna be, what it's about, you know, being outdoors where everyone can enjoy it. And the internet and these magazines just give it more of a, uh, like a life. It, it just extends it to a big, a wider audience. You may paint a wall here, so it's maybe exposed to the people in this community. But then when you, the magazines and the internet come into play, it exposes it to millions. So yeah, I guess it plays an important role in it, you know, for me, but for me, outside is where it's at, you know, live on street action, you know, to absorbing the whole environment around it, you know, it adds to the art, you know, when you can absorb what's going around in the environment as well.